Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. All right. Uh, last news item today. This this headline speaks to my soul. <laughs> this is like this is this is it's it's Canadian. It's got sperm. It's got 3D printing. It like this is my headline. This was written for me. Totally. And oh, actually, I uh, I recently fixed my 3D printer. It would be, it was giving me issues. And uh, this, just sidebar fun fact: the way I fixed it was to burn it with fire. Like. <laughs> Quite okay. literally, like quite literally, because what had happened is there, there's there's like this little metal block that is like there's a heating element in it that that's what heats up the nozzle, and uh, right. so you screw the nozzle into the metal block, and then in top on top of that is a heat break. So it's just like a little bit of metal that sticks out that gives a little break so that uh, the heat doesn't creep up into uh, the rest of the extruder and melt the plastic too early and clog everything sure. up. Um, so that when you screw the nozzle in and you screw the heat break in, they have to meet in the middle, but they'd have to not be putting too much pressure on each other. Um, and when I had changed the nozzle, I think there was just like a little tiny gap there. I hadn't quite screwed it in far enough. And so the, uh, the plastic was like squooshing out of there and leaking outside of the hot end. And it was like gobbing up on the nozzle and knocking the prints off the print bed as they were going. And so that's yeah. what was causing my issues. And, uh, so when I took the whole thing apart, of course it's cold now. So the plastic is solid and it's coated on everything. So how do you get the plastic off? Well, these are parts that are designed to get pretty hot, right? Grab a like a kitchen blowtorch and uh, just go to town on those bad boys. You literally burn it with fire. And, That's awesome. And now it works. Yeah, I saw you. You printed a little Cthulhu, right? Yes. That was adorable. I, that Love that it. Cthulhu has caused me so many issues. It wasn't the model because the model is an easy model to print. And I know that. That's why right. I kept trying it. I'm like, there's no reason this should be failing. So like I would try and fix something on the printer and then I'd print Cthulhu again and then it would die. And then I and so I, I have like six half Cthulhu's kicking around the house right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so that that now I, I finally have an actual Cthulhu. Oh well, all's well that ends well. Did you not consider at some point that you might be tapping into ancient I, alien forces? Unknown? I did. That was the joke. Is that I'm trying to summon Cthulhu and he doesn't want to be summoned right now. So <laughs> yeah, leave him to his sleep. All right. So uh, so this is a lab in the University of British Columbia. So Canadian. Woo. Um, now this, I, I want to talk a little bit about headlines being deceptive. If you just read the headline here. You think that they 3D printed sperm cells, right? Yeah. 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 That's not what happened. No. No, they, they haven't gotten to sperm yet. Uh, it's really, really fucking cool. And it could lead to um, to new fertility treatments because uh, one, one of the problems with fertility is when uh, either the male doesn't produce enough sperm or there's uh, or like there's a blockage where the sperm doesn't make it out of the testicles and but there are sperm being produced and one of the ways they can solve that is by going into the testicles and like microscopically extracting individual sperm cells and then trying in vitro fertilization with that but it's there, there's like a 50 percent success rate with that and it's not a comfortable surgery mm. so it's it so for fertility issues that can be a really big blow to uh, to a couple that want to have a baby um, so what they're doing is they've actually, let me get, um, there we go. So they're bioprinting cells in 3D. So what they're doing is they, they've uh, cultured stem cell cells from a testicular biopsy. Um, and then they cultivate those cells in like cell culture. And then they 3D print those cells into uh, structures that are similar to the sperm producing seminiferous tubules that are found in the testicles with the hopes that they would then do the job that they would do in the testicles and produce sperm, but without being inside. And they got about halfway. So they, they it's didn't... It's really cool. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty similar. It's like a 3D printing version of um, transplanting eggs for IVF. It's, uh, it's really neat. I do kind of, going back to the title... I kind of regret the title of this because like as soon as i read it earlier i was like i can feel the like red pill response and i want to be like 
no <laughs> catch it before it gets out there i can feel like incels on the internet being like they're gonna replace men <laughs> they're gonna print sperm it's like no 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 it's like like any kind of ivf stuff you need the you need the cells from the human to start with <laughs> to be able to kick the process off yeah but like you say for like infertility treatments it's really really neat yeah it is really neat um yeah i i purposely titled my stream a little bit deceptive just to kind of get on the bandwagon with that can 3d printing get you pregnant yeah. but i think mine's less deceptive than this one yeah because i agree like obviously mine is a little bit misleading just from like out of context but once you learn about it, it's like yeah no this is talking about how to use 3d printers to get pregnant now yeah, uh pregnant, stuff like yeah. this this is in preliminary research phases so like if this does have a clinical use it'll probably not be used widely for you know probably about 10 to 20 years at the, at the least mm -hmm. um if it goes faster that would be great but um stuff like advances like this take a long time to uh hammer out all the details but um yeah, no, let's, uh, we got to the middle stage of sperm production, Flanagan explained. And, uh, yeah, so it's, this is pretty fantastic stuff. It's pretty cool. And then, like, the the other thing they mentioned is, you know, you can kind of hope that as a side effect, by studying that stage of, like, sperm production, they might be able to cure some of the infertility problems. Uh, anyway, you know, it could lead to sort of a better understanding of what causes those. Well, PZ Myers is in the chat. Is that the PZ Myers? Not the PZ Myers. PZ Myers. <laughs> we're British and Canadian. Mm. Yes. Um, yes. So sperm sperm maturation <laughs> is absolutely complex. So they're a million miles away from function. Yes, they like like middle middle of sperm production is not necessarily middle with regards to how much work they have left to do. Because oh. of, oftentimes, like you get ninety nine percent of the way there, and then that last one percent takes just as much work as the first ninety nine percent. That makes sense. So it's even possible that this isn't going to pan out at all, but it would be amazing if it did. But yeah, I think you it's, were. It's just good to study. Good to start. You gotta, you yeah. gotta start somewhere. And yeah, and on. Wait, it says I'm the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it, and obviously an advance like this, it can like there's there's not necessarily just the one use for it. Like you said, we can learn the more we learn about how these cells function the more likely we are to be able to develop even more treatments for this sort of thing yeah plus there's a bunch of scientists who get to say that their job right now is 3d printing sperm yes so well no 3d win -win. printing testicular cells that could lead to sperm production yes yes Can't 3d printing to facilitate sperm don't be clickbaity Oh, speaking of clickbaity, remind me. But after after we leave, I need to get you to. I need to get a few like still shots of you making ridiculous faces for the thumbnails. I keep forgetting right. to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it for the articles.